Tonight, the uh, truth is verified that Chad Everett is not a doctor. Uh, and I just asked him to make sure I was going to say that in the beginning. And then I said, gee, maybe I better check. And you said no, but thanks for the compliment. Hmm. Meaning, of course, you were glad that you could portray a doctor as well as you have. And you certainly have in the medical center. Thank you. Did you study medicine at all to, to do the role, or is it just a script that you do? And well, I did some research uh, early on uh, behind uh, Walter DeShell at Harbor uh, uh, General in Los Angeles and uh, photographed about uh, 44 hours of radical neck surgery and uh, worked clinic for a couple of weeks and uh, uh, just, you know, uh, uh, posed as a resident, yeah. but I never never touched anybody, but just yeah. uh, sort of observed, and the doctors would talk to me out loud, and I learned bedside manner. And well, was there a concern uh, <clears throat> doing medical center of being as accurate as possible? Now, I know you took dramatic license, of course, but but some concern that the average guy at home watching that would say, gee, that's the way you do this, or that's what the disease means, and so forth. Well, we were required viewing for Pierce College in nursing, so we were as accurate, as you say, with the allowance of dramatic yeah. license that yeah. we could be. Yeah. Uh, we tried to be uh, use the correct instruments at a particular uh, stage of the, uh, of the surgery um, uh, as required. Uh, uh, personally, I had no idea how I was going to feel about doctors when I, uh, when I started the show and uh, when I went to the research for it. And I was very turned on by the profession and uh, the fact that a team of people trying to save somebody's life. And mm -hmm. Consequently, uh, uh, none of it ever made me ill or or any of, anything of that nature, and I didn't become a hypochondriac. And it became important to me to try and portray uh, the, uh, yeah. the good part of the profession. Was that a great turning point in your career to get that role? Well, I turned it down originally. Really? And uh, <clears throat> another actor did the pilot, and uh, it didn't sell. And uh, uh, meanwhile, I'd, I'd lost uh, three features, major roles, because I wasn't a household word. And uh, so I finally... They offered it to me again, and uh, uh, I accepted it. We came to terms. But um, I needed name value, and I had none. I was known as a good actor, but I wasn't bankable. Yeah. yeah. Which means what? So it was a great break. B explain bankable yeah. to people. In the... Well, you know, there are, there are, people like to feel that they can get... There are 5% grocers and 10% grocers, and I suppose uh, Redford would be a 10% grocer, and maybe I'd be a 6% or 7% grocer. <clears throat> Which means that uh, uh, whatever money goes into the film, uh, the, the particular star that picture is going to guarantee you, uh, uh, you know, seven percent, ten percent of your gross back. Yeah. How did you get into acting? Where are you from, and what? How did you get started? <clears throat> well, if I'd been in the same contest Lloyd was in, uh, uh, that fat boy contest, uh, I might have shaded him, you know, because I was a husky lad. And uh, but I really uh, have always kind of enjoyed people as well, and. Uh, uh, I did my first play in high school. Where, where, where is that? Uh, at Fortson High School. And uh, uh, Eugene Baker was the director. I did it on a dare, and the play was The Hasty Heart. And uh, I was out punting the ball to our, to our kickoff man, uh, Dwayne Galvac, and we're kicking the ball back and forth. And we were laughing about how they were going to get guys that were uh, big enough and physical enough to play battle-weary veterans, which, of course, is what The Hasty Heart is about. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, he laughed at me and said, I dare you to go out for the play. And I said, I'll go out if you go out. So he was our right tackle offense and defense. And uh, he, uh, he ended up playing Yank. I ended up playing Lockie. Our left end played Kiwi. Our right end played Digger. Our manager played Tommy. Uh, one of the, the captains of the cheerleaders played the nurse, Maggie. And, <laughs> Literally a team effort. <laughs> right, it was a team effort. And, we had a, and, and Baker was a great director. And he, uh, he got a very passable... Uh, effort out of all of us, and it was a thrill for me to do it. So where's it where's Ford's in high school? At? It's in Dearborn, Michigan. Michigan. Mm -hmm. So that's your home. Yes. Your father in the show in show business. Your mother? Or? Uh, no, neither neither parent in show business. Uh, uh, both uh, whimsical people and uh, with senses of humor. So how'd you get to California? Did you like everybody that I hear? Well, go to California, start looking for parts. And... I did it just like everybody. I went to California, started looking for parts, and couldn't get any. So well, I went to New York. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I was doing commercials back there, and I uh, and uh, William T. Orr, uh, who was then head of television at, at Warner Brothers in 1960, uh, uh, was uh, had some open readings, and I uh, competed and uh, was given a contract, and uh, was brought back to Hollywood uh, under the uh, tongue-in-cheek, quote-unquote, New York actor title. 
Right. I was then a New York actor. I'd never been on the boards. I... <laughs> Having uh, been a major part of a major television series for a long time in this country, how do you feel about television? It's getting a lot of knocks from a lot of people these days as being inferior and full of bad stuff. In, in particular, who? Well, I think most, uh, most print critics knock television. Certainly the movie uh, network knock television. Uh, I myself think there's a lot of bad stuff on television, mm -hmm. a lot of needless escapism. Well, network knock news. And uh, news, uh, I think, is, is probably uh, needs more censoring than some of the dramatic programs. And I think they're taking steps to do that, by the way. Uh, and maybe not because, uh, maybe I've had something to do with that because I've been walking around with my mouth open for uh, about two years. Well, what do you because, mean, censoring? What, what would you say? Well, I just don't think the 6 o'clock news should show George Wallace getting gunned down when I'm sitting with my four-year-old in my lap, all right? Uh, they've started to, I think, I think that should be for the 11 o'clock news. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can mention that that, was, that, that, that happened and then uh, details to follow, or at least give us a break, you know? I mean, if, it is a family hour, right, 6 yeah. p.m. Right. Uh, give the parent a warning. Uh, as a result, for until recently, uh, now I've been, begun to watch it again, and I think they started to come around a little bit. Uh, I haven't watched the news; it hasn't been on in, in my home. You know, um, I, I I think during the Vietnam crisis, uh, seeing people, uh, you know, the, the street riots, uh, seeing officers hit, uh, you know, for for the sake of live, instant, you know, be their coverage, yeah. uh, was kind of hard on on some people and maybe a little inconsiderate and certainly much more violent. My little girl asked me, well, what was that? What happened, Doc? And it was no beginning, middle, and an end, at least in a dramatic story. If somebody gets, uh, uh, you know, you go bang, bang, and the guy falls down, there's a reason for it. There's a build-up to it. There's a story to it. There's a, there's a, a justification for it, and there's a, uh, a uh, well, what do you call it, a moral to the story. Yeah. Chad, thanks very much for being with us. Pleasure being here. Thank, Thank you, you for having us and sharing your audience. Thank you. We'll be right back.